Hey everyone, I'm Caitlin from Morton's On The Move and today I want to tell you about how we refloored our RV. We have a 2005 DRV Mobile Suites and it had carpet and linoleum in it from the factory, from when it was first made. And since we've been traveling for about two years, we decided that it was finally time for us to rip out the flooring and put something down that was more aesthetically pleasing to us as well as uh, the carpet and linoleum were just getting a little bit old and needed to be taken out. We chose to go with a vinyl plank flooring that we found at Home Depot. It is the Allure brand and it has a grip strip edging, which means that there are these little lips on either side of the plank that have some sticky adhesive on it so that when you set a plank down and then set another plank next to it, the two sticky sides meet and hold each other in place. We also chose the vinyl plank because we wanted something that was maybe going to be a little bit flexible with the flexing of the rig. Um, it wasn't going to be a ton of extra weight, although it was a little bit more heavy than the carpet and linoleum that we removed. We also liked that it was pretty durable and water resistant and it actually looked pretty nice too. So the first thing that we had to do is prepare the floor for the new vinyl plank, which meant that we had to rip out all the carpet and the linoleum. Now this was a really make or break piece of it because if the linoleum was going to be super glued down, which it could have been, uh, it would have been a lot of work for us to pull that up. Fortunately for us, there was only uh, linoleum flooring glue in certain spots, so the linoleum actually came up pretty quickly. Um, the carpet, on the other hand, which there was quite a bit of, has a ton of staples in it. For anyone who has pulled out an RV carpet, you know this, and this is actually one of the most time-consuming things. All right, here comes up the very first part of the carpet. Oh. Yuck. No turning back now. Nope, no turning back now. Oh, look at all those staples. Wow. Yuck. Well, they're coming out. That's good. Most of them. Oh, I'm going to need some gloves. Taking out the staples takes a lot of time. They're really far in there and there are a ton of them. It took us probably the better part of a day to get out the carpet and all of those staples. What do you think, Bells? What do you think of all of this? You having fun? Oh yeah. What are you doing? I'm pulling, trying to pull out staples. There's about a bazillion of those stupid things. Mm hmm Ugh. We got the slide cleaned out. We just removed all our furniture from the back area and removed the vents. So we are ready to pull up the rest of the carpet. There it is. We have removed all of the carpet. Yep. Well, on this level. It really wasn't too bad. Yeah, we were able to pull up most of the staples with the carpet. Thank goodness. And the staples are the hardest part. Over here was a bit of a trick because the carpet was stapled underneath. You get down here, you can probably see there's still some carpet remnants in there. But they. We were able to just yank it out and uh, the new floor will only go under a partial way anyway. And then over here, we do have a little bit of water damage which we were kind of expecting. The, um, it's really not too bad. It's just a, a small layer of wood in here, but it's hard underneath there. We had a leak alongside the RV for a while. That took us a while to get repaired, so. The 
linoleum was a little bit tricky in some spaces, particularly where it was underneath the slide. Um, and we weren't able to get all of it in some cases. Uh, we just had to cut back as far as we could underneath the slide um, and, and pull it out. Our RV has an island and we believe that DRV put the flooring in before they installed the island. So we ended up just cutting the linoleum around the island. We did not try to move the island at all. And when it come, came to putting in the new flooring, we also just cut around the island. Good. Almost there. Ugh. So one of the biggest concerns that we had was that we have a flush slide, which means that when the slide goes out, it actually drops down to meet the floor pretty flush. And when this slide had carpet on it, what they did is they just had the carpet come over and there was a lip of carpet that bridged that gap. Now what you see here is the actual plastic a uh, ramp, if you will, that the slide pushes up on and then comes in on. And there is a two, like one to two inch gap here that um, they had used a piece of plywood underneath the carpet to bridge the gap. And the carpet just covered that up and you, you didn't know that it was really there. But once we had taken the carpet out, we saw what we had to work with and we had to figure out a way to bridge that gap make this uh, transition pretty smooth and hopefully have something that was sturdy enough to uh, take any weight that would be on there on that gap piece um, and then also meet the floor of the rest of the RV in a in a smoothish nice way. What we ended up doing is figuring out our own way to do it and we took one of the vinyl planks and put that over that gap. We did some tests with it and we determined that while it did have a little bit of flex when you push down on that space, that overall it was pretty rigid and uh, would do the trick and allow us to have this pretty clean transition from the slide to the main floor. Because this is a floating floor, we actually glued this first piece, this edge piece, onto the slide floor so that it wouldn't go anywhere um, and made sure that it came to the point that we wanted it to and then built the rest of the floor going that way. We really like the way that it looks and it came out and when we step on it, we really don't feel like it's going to break or go anywhere. Uh, but one of the drawbacks is that, you know, maybe over time this uh, plank will, you know, loosen up and not be as sturdy. And also when we bring the slide in, we have to be really careful because when that comes up, it, it basically is just the plank flooring sticking out um, so that if we stepped on that when the slide was coming in, uh, it would probably break the plank. So we have to be really careful. So this is what I'm talking about. We just brought the slide in a little bit so that you can see that it's just this real thin plank that we have here, although it is glued down pretty well with hard, of, hard as nails glue. Um, but if we were to step on this, I really don't think that it would be able to hold the weight of a person. So um, we have to be really careful when the slide is coming in. Uh, this was also a trick if we look over here on the corners because the carpet had wrapped around actually and came to maybe about here. So we had to cut this piece to go around this part of the wall and as you can see there's nothing underneath this to support it. So it hangs down a little bit when we bring the slide in. When it's out it's supported by the plastic ramp so there's no issue and obviously nobody's standing there but it's just something that we have to be careful of especially near the door so that on a travel day if we're coming in to get to the refrigerator or something that we don't knock this and, um, and, and damage it in some way. So we had considered another way to do this that wouldn't have left this lip quite so flimsy um, and that would have been to put plywood over the floor of the slide 
on the entire thing. So if the plywood actually came out to this point and then we would lay the plank on top of it. The reasons why we didn't do that was because a, we didn't want the extra weight of all of that plywood along this entire slide. And B, that would have raised up this edge a good, you know, half inch or so, quarter to half inch, and then we would have had plywood exposed there, and we would have had to figure out a way to cover this lip and that plywood um, with like a rubber or something, and it would have just been taller so that when we're walking, um, we might have hit that more with our, with our feet. We thought about doing a thin metal strip along this edge, but we opted not to do that because again, the floor would have had to come up onto that piece of metal and it would have curved this edge up. We also looked at a couple other flooring options, much harder ones, sturdier, that would have been able to take the weight much more, but in the interest of cost effectiveness, uh, we went this route because those were much more expensive. So we decided to go this way because we felt pretty confident that this was going to be durable enough. We figured we could be careful enough not to step on it. And it left us with this really clean edge from the plastic ramp that actually makes it look pretty finished just as it is. So with any flooring installation, you have to remove trim and cut around holes in the floor like vents. Uh, we had a number of vents that we had to replace and we spray painted them while we were at it so they look shiny and new. Um, but this stuff was really easy to work with going around those holes and this counter um, and along the walls because all we had to do was score it with razor blades and we were able to cut it that way. So we could get really, um, really accurate with our cuts and we didn't have to cut it with a, a saw or anything like that. With our RV, we have this telescope encounter, and the flooring actually goes underneath it. Um, the grip strip was really nice to work with going underneath here and underneath the slide because with click lock flooring, we, you'd have to put it at a certain angle to click it in. With the grip strip, you just basically can slide it in and set it together. Um, so that made it really easy. So this slide that the kitchen is on is not a flush slide. It is on rollers and most of the rollers on this slide are actually connected to the frame and the slide rolls on them in and out. However, we do have two rollers that keep the slide from going back and forth and one of them is located underneath this cabinet. We were able to pull out this drawer and access that roller to adjust it so that we could get the flooring further underneath there, which was really nice. The second roller, however, is underneath this telescoping portion of the counter, so we were not able to raise it up or anything like that. It had most of the weight of the slide on it, so we actually weren't able to get the linoleum out from underneath it without pushing it in and out a few times, rolling it, and really pulling that linoleum out. When it came to putting the new flooring down there, there was no way that we could get it underneath that roller. So what we did is we actually shaved um, an, the edge off and, and made kind of a little bit of a ramp so that when it rolls in, it easily comes up onto the new flooring. The flooring on this side of the RV does not go all the way to the wall underneath this. It, it ends just an inch or two underneath the cabinets. Um, we just cut it off there. We also put the new flooring in up here where the shower and vanity is. And it also goes into the bathroom and this closet. As you can see from the shape of this area, there's a lot of very intricate cuts. This was actually my project in this larger project was doing this area up here. It was very time consuming cutting to all these different shapes and getting them to fit just right, especially like around the toilet where um, there's a pipe that goes into the floor. So a lot of intricate cutting, but thankfully this vinyl planking was easy enough to work 
with, like I said, to cut with razor blades. So I was able to get pretty accurate shapes uh, for the panels themselves. As you can see, the new flooring stops here. And this is the original carpet. We decided not to rip this out. Uh, this is going to be tackled in a future renovation project because um, we have this step up in front of the closet that is covered with carpet and it does come up onto the bedroom slide a little bit over here and that just was not something we wanted to try to tackle in this endeavor. So once we got all of this flooring in, the next thing was to basically seal it because we had it come roughly up to the edges, but say if we spilled something, water still could get down and onto the actual subfloor. So before we put the trim back on and everything, we did a lot of caulking around the edges to keep water from getting down onto the subfloor. This is a piece of trim that we haven't put back on yet that shows the caulk that we put around the shower, for instance. Um, we just used a clear silicone to go around the edge here to keep any water from stepping out of the shower from going uh, underneath the new flooring. A lot of the other areas, like around the counter in the kitchen, we did as well, but the quarter round trim covers it up. So as we put this flooring down, we knew immediately that we were in love with it. I mean, it was just gorgeous. And, and once we finished it, it just made this whole place change and we, we just loved it. Um, unfortunately, the first time we brought in this flush slide, we got this huge scratch. Now, this was something that we were kind of prepared for mentally, kind of not. Um, but because we had carpet in here before, um, it, it kind of hid anything that might have scratched. We were more concerned with scratches showing up on this new floor from like rocks or something with slides coming in. But this scratch is from a screw that is underneath the slide. Um, it's a screw head that's just a little cro crooked. We can feel it now. Um, but when the carpet was there, we couldn't tell. And it actually, the carpet came out to about here. It, it held the slide up so that it didn't actually kind of tip down onto this floor. But now that that's gone, when the slide comes in and it tips you know, onto the floor here, it gouges in, and that's why you see it just right here and not all the way back here. So what we've been doing in the meantime is putting a piece of plastic down um, to guard this. Uh, we may put something more permanent down, um, and we also want to grind out that that screw head. Uh, but we have very little space to work with under there. You can just barely stick your fingers under and feel it. So that was really heartbreaking the first time we brought this slide in, but you know it, it's still a hundred and twenty times better than our old flooring. So we're we're still pretty happy with it. We do have to be very diligent when bringing in the slides on this floor. We have to make sure that it's swept up and cleaned really nicely because the chance of there being a rock or something under there is still pretty high. And, and this slide does slide on this floor. So if anything was under there, it could gouge this. And, and as you can see, the, this floor is not um, extremely hard and it, it will eat out a good chunk of it. We did get some um, floor repair putty from Home Depot that we can work into any scratches that come along uh, which was pretty cheap so we're gonna do that but you know we just have to think about it a little bit more than when it was just carpet and you know padded <laughs> when you bring in the slide. So we absolutely love our new flooring scratch and all and uh, we, we think it's a very worthwhile project if you're thinking about doing this to your RV in the future. It costs us about 400 bucks for about 200 square feet of this flooring and we knocked it out in only three days with help from Tom's parents. We took one day to rip out all the flooring, 
day two was a rest and recovery day and then day three with Tom's parents help we put the whole thing down in one day so the the results are magnificent we're very happy with them and if you guys have your own RV reflooring project going on and you have questions for us please leave them in the comments below we will do our best to help you out thanks so much for watching I'm Caitlin from Morton's on the move and I'll see you next time all right, here we go. <sighs> yes, we have a new Woo! floor. Right. <sighs> I'm done. <laughs> We're both done. We're all done. Thank you so much for your help, Eric. Uh,